Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Keeping It Real Estate Show. My name is Dan Breezy. Today we have Ruth Hiller on with us. Ruth Hiller is an experienced real estate investor since 1992, managing all aspects of acquisition, sale, leasing, and renovations for single family homes, retail space, and multifamily in New York, California, Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. Ruth is passionate about investing in real estate, and she's built a long-term team in multifamily syndication. She founded YesMF in 2021 as a way to bring opportunities to investors while educating them on how to invest. And she helps execute successful due diligence and makes the right decisions for investors in each need. So with that being said, Ruth, welcome to the show. We're super excited to have you on. What I wanted to start with, Ruth, is your story and really how much you've accomplished really in the last three years. If you can share a little bit about what's happened in the last three years of your life, and then we can get into some other topics as well. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be on your show. Um, so my story, you know, I call myself the accidental businesswoman. So I come from an art and design background and never really thought that I had any business sense, but I've always bought and sold real estate. And so my, I bought my first property when I was 29. And so, you know, my family just bought and sold real estate, but I didn't realize until like three years ago that it was a business and I was getting a lot of passive income because I had another career as an artist and as a graphic designer. And so that's why I call myself the accidental businesswoman because I'm like, wow, I've been managing all these businesses. And then, you know, then I met a, a mentor on a bus that taught me all about multifamily. And I started heavily investing about three years, three years ago. And I'm invested in uh, thir 14 passive deals and uh, four general partner deals. Wow. So that's impressive, Ruth. So give me a little bit more information. You said you've had some mentors in your life, the gentleman you met on a bus. When you say gentleman met on the bus, who was that? What, what do you mean? It was, I met Brad Sumrock on a bus. And so, you know, I, I think that I started doing Tony Robbins work about five years ago and I didn't know where it would take me. And so the biggest investment I've made in the last five years is in myself, right? So success leaves clues. That's like my favorite my, my favorite saying. And so through Tony, I was on, I was on a bus in Malaysia and I turned to the guy next to me and I was like, so what do you do? And he's like, I teach people how to invest and syndicate large multifamily properties. And I was like, oh my God, I have one. Can you help me? And it wasn't doing well at the time. And like, I don't believe in coincidences. So that started my journey with Brad. And he's like, well, I have this program. You should come study with me. So uh, that was that was about four, three and a half years ago. And it's been like, I just jumped all in. Yeah, gosh, that's awesome. So you were, what made you, let's go back to Tony Robbins real quick. What made you first decide to join with Tony and, and what kind of benefits did you see with being a part of his group? So in 2017, I wasn't doing great. I was like, not doing great mentally. And I really, I'm like, Oh my God, what do I do? And I had a friend uh, come over and I, and she's been like a spiritual guide for me. Like she suggested things to me that I normally wouldn't come up with myself. So I asked her like, Oh, I'm not really doing well. What should I do? And she's like, have you heard of Tony Robbins? And I was like, isn't he some weird business guru? And she's like, no, 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 no. You need to go to his date with destiny program. And this was in like March of 2017. And so literally I went on the internet that day. It was a fortune and I signed up for the December date with destiny. I had never read a book of his. I'd never, never listened to his podcast. I just had, and even before the, that seminar in December, I never, still never read a book. I just showed up. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was life-changing for me. Like in the first 15 minutes, I transformed my life and my identity. So well, what do you mean by that? So you, 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 so your friend tells you about this. You're just, you must've trusted this friend pretty, pretty much, or you were in a really tough spot where you just were like, all right, I'm in, I'm going to sign up and, and you go there. What, what happened in that first 15 minutes or what was going on there that, that changed so much mentally? Uh, well, I was in a bad spot and I think I had an identity, you know, of being an unhappy person. And so in the first 15 minutes, I, like, I knew that that was bullshit and like, it was like Tony was on the stage speaking to me and I let go of that and I became a different person. And I, I've never been that person again. When I came back from that seminar, people were like, who are you? Because, right, I had the identity of the unhappy person. And so when I, you don't have that identity anymore, people are like, 
what did you do? Right. Man, that is so powerful, Ruth. That just gives me chills. So you're <laughs> basically your identity switch is, is you see yourself in a different way than what you were seeing yourself previously, which changes how you feel about yourself and how you are as a human being on a day-to-day -day basis. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's totally correct. I think I remember the the topic that Tony was talking about was biochemistry. And I think it's fascinating, like, you know, you have good biochemistry and bad biochemistry, right? And some people, you know, I was told that I had bad biochemistry, and that's why I was unhappy. And in the first 15 minutes of the seminar, Tony showed us how to change your biochemistry <laughs> without drugs. And I was like, I remember turning to the person next to me, and I was like, Oh my God. Right. It was just, it was like life changing. So wow, I, I love that. I love that you added that in there without drugs. This is, <laughs> this is, you're changing your biochemistry naturally with through thoughts and, and the way you're perceiving yourself. So that's unbelievable, Ruth. So you are there and you're on this bus, you, you, you're, you own an apartment, which was a family owned apartment, wasn't doing very well. And, and then joining Brad's group, Brad Sumrock, which I know Brad very well, highly, highly uh, endorsed his program. Uh, what was it in, in the three-year period that really was your biggest boost or what was your biggest takeaway in a three-year period of being a part of his program? Well, I joined Brad's group not to be a passive investor and not to be a general partner. I joined Brad's group to help me with that multifamily that I owned. But it was funny. I joined at Rat Race in 2019 and uh, Brad had a deal and I literally gave uh, gave him my money that day. <laughs> and I didn't know that that's what I was going to do. So the thing you have to know about me is that like, if I like something, I'm an action taker. Like that's something I, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Let's just do it. So that's been, it served me well, right? Uh, I have good intuition. And so, you know, I've learned as I've gone along to do more due diligence, but usually I'm an intuition person that takes action. So the biggest thing for me was just taking action in Brad's groups. And so um, I really like that first passive deal. And so then I'm like, oh God, I need to. And then when I started studying, I was like, oh, I could do this. Let me just, I'd like to be a passive investor. I could double my money in five years. You know, let's just take all my money from single family and flip it into multifamily. I really believed in it. Right. And then I started having more success with the, with the family property, started making more ground in that. And then Brad, cause he's a friend of mine, uh, bugged me. He's like, you know, you need to up your game. You should join the mastermind and be a GP. And I was like, really? And so the thing that I love about Brad and the people in the Tony group is that they believed in me before I believed in myself, which is, bit, which, you know, is rare unless like, you know, cause my, my parents didn't. Right. So for me, that was just, it really helped me. And then, but I had to take the action and, and, you know, do the things, even though someone believed in me. Man, Ruth, that's, I just want to reiterate that that's so huge. Someone believed in you before you believed in yourself. I think one thing that I see, like when I was younger, I'd see these snowboarders. I can always relate with people when they're talking about snowboarding. I can see the talent some of these kids have and where they could take it if they had the belief and the confidence in themselves. And sometimes it just takes somebody believing in you and telling you that you can be great or you can do whatever it may be that you want to do. And I think that, you know, listeners out there, I'm sure there's someone in your life right now that you probably are influencing. And if you, you know, shared what you saw in them, they might be a totally different person. So that's, that's super powerful. I, I really love that you shared that. Um, you were said you were in single family before and then to multifamily. Did I catch that right? Yeah. So um, I had bought some single family homes and then, uh, you know, I bought a place in New York like 30 years ago and I turned it into a rental and then I had some retail space and um, I was going to buy more single family. And I just, it was like the tenants, trash, toilets, and termite call at like 4 a.m. Oh, the fence blew down or, you know, oh, there's mold, you know, whatever it was. It was just, I, I didn't like being a landlord, you know, okay. so I wanted so an e easier way. Yeah. So the difference for the folks that are in single family looking to maybe be a part of multifamily, what, what were the biggest uh, benefits of multifamily versus single family? So as a passive investor, I love the fact that. I can invest my money, you know, and a lot of the deals that I've invested, you know, and then I don't have to take a call at three in the morning. And the, a lot of the deals that I've invested in, I just sold a single family home recently. And I think it made a 20% average annualized return over the 12 years that we had it. And that's, and that was a lot of headache and I'm getting that in multifamily and I don't get the call as a passive investor. So for me, that's the big difference. 
Yeah, what Ruth's talking about is no calls with passive investor. If you invest with a general partner or a syndication group, you put your money in and you're passively along for the ride. So you're not ever hearing about the, the, the challenges that are going on. There's always going to be challenges in multifamily. You're always going to have things to fix, you know, tenants doing things that shouldn't be done. So the piece she's talking about is it's very hands off. And then, um, you know, the 20% over 12 years, that's a pretty darn good return for a single family home. I, I mean, that's actually really impressive, but you know, you'll see similar returns to that or better, um, with multifamily, not having to do anything. So just, just for, to, to get all the investors on the same page there. Um, and, and you said you, you came into the group, you now have 14 passive deals and your general partner in how many deals? I'm, I'm working on my fourth one now. Okay, so what, just so you understand that as well, ladies and gentlemen, general partner means she's directing the deal. She's helping build the business plan, raise the money, and make sure the business plan is completed. She's on on more of the uh, work side, of, oh, I guess you could put it. Uh, you get paid more, but you do more work. So um, you have 14 deals passively, and four is a general partner. And of your 14 passive deals, how did you select who to invest with, or how did you know that you wanted to invest in those 14 passive deals? So in, uh, in, I'm part of, uh, as you mentioned, Brad Sumrock's uh, mentoring group. And so um, I'm a people person and I'm an intuition person. And so I made it my mission. Once I decided that's what I wanted to do is to get to know the good teams. Who are the good teams? You know, uh, who's the good asset manager? I learned what questions to ask. And so for me, I have a 10 deals that come across my desk daily. And it's like, no, no, no. Right. Just because, and people say, but the deal looks so good. And I'm like, it's not really about the deal. It's about the team and, and, and their track record. So that's how I picked it. And I'd say most of the deals I picked are doing really well. I might have like uh, one or two that have had some like, you know, insurance and stuff problems. So they're not, they're not cash flowing. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good look as to for us, you know, we have 14, 15 deals we're managing as general partners, majority are doing good, you might have one or two that are going through a tough time, you work through it and you move on. I, I think the other piece that I just want to reiterate what Ruth just said, which is huge is is picking the right people and getting to know the right people and making sure that you believe in the team. I couldn't agree more with what Ruth is talking about. If you're going to invest in a deal, you have to get to know the people who are running the deal and their track record. And then you got to believe in their underwriting and 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 feel like it's a, it's going to be a deal that you want to be a part of because you're you're investing your money. You're going to be along for the ride for a three to five year period, potentially more. Um, so th that that's really great. And then you learn to ask good questions. I think that's so critical the part that i can tell you right now is in order to add, add ask better questions you have to become more educated so i think that that's one thing that these groups can do is help you become more educated so you can spot when you're seeing these deals come across your desk that maybe aren't um aren't, aren't where you should be putting your capital do you have anything to add to that ruth um no i mean the, the, the... Like I said, through, also through being in the group, uh, people have shared with me their like passive investor due diligence checklist, and so that helps. And I, you know, I like to share that with people too. That always helps. Like, what well, what questions do I ask? Like, I know, like, and trust you, but you know, I don't know what questions to ask. And I, I tell people also, if you're going to invest with me, like, Google me, do some. Oh well, no, I know you. I said we'll do it anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, great. So what you started a company called Yes MF. What yeah. made you want to start your company? Uh, I wanted to help. I really wanted to help women because I feel that women are underserved investors. I think that like after attending Tony's events and all this other stuff, I would see a lot of women that, you know, didn't know what to do, how to invest other than in the stock market or like a 401k. And so, you know, after learning from Brad, I just got really passionate about teaching people. And I don't know what you're thinking, but MF stands for multifamily, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yes. And then capital M, capital F. I, I yeah. love it. Very catchy. Every time I see your logo, I, I'm just, I just smile. It makes me just smile. You wanted to help women. Yes. Ruth, I, I love that you say you wanted to help women. I think that's so awesome. And, and ladies that are listening, Ruth allowed me, she's okay with sharing this. She started the last three years has totally transformed her life. Let's say she started when she was 56, 57 years old. 
and look at Ruth Ruth now. You know, she wasn't happy with who she was or where she was in 2017. And I can tell you the thing that attracted me to Ruth was her personality. I just I just thought her energy and who she was. I'm like, I like this human being. I want to be around this person. So I think, you know, j- just don't give up. You know, that's a great message. And, and I think it's you're seeing it right now. And, and Ruth's parents straight up said to her, I didn't believe they didn't believe in me. Your parents didn't. They weren't there to support her. And um, I just think that's a that's a great story, Ruth. So great work. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been it's yeah. been an incredible journey. I just uh, pinch myself how lucky I am. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love it. So, I mean, there had to have been some challenges you faced over the last three to five years. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced? I know it was your identity. Was there anything else that was really big for you or was that really just kind of the, the linchpin piece and off you were going? Well, it was stepping into the new identity. So I came up with this, I think you've done UPW. Yeah. So yeah. I came up with the new belief. And so the belief I came with, and I, I was standing at the stage and Tony Robbins was looking down at me. And I was, and my new belief is I've stepped into my greatness and opportunities fucking abound. And so I, that is in my system. He was looking at me. And so I don't know from that point forward, I don't even, I think that was uh, 2018 or something. And then I just, I just fully embodied that and, and believed that. So what, what is that belief again? I want to, I want to hear it one more time. I was trying to write it down. I've stepped into my greatness and opportunities abound. I've stepped into my greatness and opportunities abound and boom, that's your belief. And I mean, Hey, in the last three years, it seems to me like that has become a reality. So maybe the power of belief is a little bit more uh, powerful than, than some of us are maybe thinking. So I love that. I love that so much. Uh, any specific markets or types of assets you're focused on specifically? Are there any no-goes as far as markets you won't look in? Or, or is it is there a specific market that you are very excited about? I love Tennessee. <laughs> I, I will not look in California or New York. I just sold some major properties there. And you know, as a real estate investor, we can reap a lot of tax benefits, but in California and New York, you can't reap those benefits against state taxes. And so unfortunately, that's why I say don't invest in those states. <laughs> oh, that, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and also in those states, it can be very difficult to evict and tenants can take advantage of landlords. Unfortunately, you, you might have them there and they might not pay rent and you can't get them out. Well, if you have debt on the property and you have a loan payment that's due every month, these banks don't cut you any slack. If you're the general partner or the investors, they make you pay no matter what. But some of the tenants might just say, I'm not paying this month and I'm not going to pay this year. And you're, and you have tenants that, you know, in California, New York, where it's difficult to get them out, it can be very challenging. Well, we lucked out in our California property, all the tenants paid during COVID, even though they had that, you know, but uh, I did own a retail store in New York city and we had this tenant that squatted there for four years. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Right. It was like we would get them to eviction court and then they would declare bankruptcy. So we'd have to go into bank and they would, they did this back and forth for five years. And oh my God, I I thought we would never be rid of them. It was crazy. Gosh. What's your main focus or what's your main goal? goal? You're helping investors come into high quality deals. Is that really the goal of Yes MF or what else do you do? Yes. I help investors come into high quality deals. Um, I'm I'm usually not the person that does acquisitions or you know but I do um I do raise capital and I do investor relations so I love to educate people and get people excited about multifamily and I think the thing that I learned was after a Tony Robbins event about about selling or getting people interested is like I would come back from the event and I'd be like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then people like I want to go what was that and so it was funny because then I'd come back with my multifamily deals oh my god oh my god and then the people were like I want in I want in so it's funny how um you know it's tell don't sell right that you know that's sort of what I've learned over the last few years yeah, that's powerful. I, I you know, I, I, I will agree too. When I went to UPW, you, you hear things about Tony Robbins and then you go to one of his events and you actually experience it and you have to experience it. You have to go and see what it's like. You, you end up um, around uh, folks that are, are just uh, at a different level of energy. And, you know, it's not just the hoorah hype and it, it's really about controlling your mental state and building some grit and, and, and being able to control your, your emotions. And I think, I mean, Hey, what's more powerful than that as an entrepreneur or a business owner is being able to better control your emotions and how you feel on a day-to-day basis. Um, so uh, worth checking out indeed, if you, if you're maybe listening and you're not sure 
year of what 2023 looks like, make it a make it a goal to go to UPW. He has them live. The events are unbelievable. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, totally life changing. Yeah, they really are. Um, key lessons you've learned along your investing journey. You've been investing in real estate in a really for a really long time. You know, what would be if you had two or three of your biggest takeaways to help people avoid major mistakes or pitfalls? What would they be? Um, know, like, and trust the sponsor team is always key. Um, do your due diligence. Make sure you ask a bunch of questions, um, and then also. Be ready to take action. Don't just sit on the sidelines because, you know, buy real estate and wait. Don't wait to buy real estate because I have a lot of friends that missed out, like on on the Tennessee deal, you know, because they were just waiting too long and they're you know, they kicked themselves. I'm like, just take just take the action. And I, I think it's scary as an investor to do the first one. I remember the first one that I did. I would I called you know the sponsor and asked him every 15 minutes what about this what about that and and also make sure that the you know that if you're going to invest in a syndication that you have access like personal access to the sponsor so that yeah. you feel comfortable and that they'll answer your questions yeah i i love it no like and trust the sponsor do due diligence and take action I, I could not agree more with all three of those and if you don't know how to do due diligence or you don't know anything about it there are tons of books tons of research tons of investor groups out there to become more educated to ask the better questions when you're looking forward to 2023 ruth what kind of goals do you are you setting what are you looking to do in in 2023 so in 2023, I'm looking to, to be a GP at, at least two, uh, two to three deals. I would love to be able to bring $10 million to each deal. That's my, that's my goal. And uh, I'm also looking for my uh, professional uh, businesses to be able to do a joint venture um, with someone. And what a joint venture is, instead of us doing a syndication, it would be like Dan and Mike and I would buy our own 100 unit property. So it's a little bit different. So yeah. for so I like to have di diversity and different goals. I, I want to dig in a little bit on your, uh, as you're as you're saying, you want to buy uh, be a GP on two to three deals. I understand that your goal though is to try to bring ten million to each deal. When you are building your investor database, or when you're you know helping investors come into these deals, how are you sourcing investors? Where are you finding investors? How are you meeting them? How are you building that trust? Well, interestingly enough, when I joined Brad's mastermind in. Uh, what was it 2020 i think i joined the mastermind and uh i asked him i said brad i think i want to raise capital and he's like well if you're going to raise capital you have to nurture your database and i was like well what does that mean and he was like you know you can't just go ask people for money right you have to educate them on what they're getting and so that's when i founded my company i'm like all right i need a company and then i started doing these educational newsletters and so i would say that um 90 percent of my investors come from that newsletter that i do and people i get like a 60 percent open rate which is sort of unheard of people really like my emails i try to keep them short goofy and simple so as you know <laughs> and the, and then oh. lately i've been going out and um you know I've, I, I've been recording webinars and getting you know getting the word out on other stages you know getting uh, more people interested I love it. I love it, Ruth. I think that with the direction you're going and the uh, knowledge you have and the folks you're working with, you you will hit your goals. I, I, I'm really, really excited to get to know you and, and appreciate you having us uh, being on our show. If people wanted to get to hold, a hold of you or wanted to get on your newsletter, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Um, if they go on uh, yesmfnow.com. And they click the free info button. They'll get a bunch of informational articles and then they'll be added to my uh, email list. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode, Ruth. We want to thank you so much again for coming on the show today. Um, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you everyone for listening. We hope you gained some really valuable insight listening to this episode. And if you have any questions or you want to learn more about investing with us or passive investing in general, click the link below to reach out to us. Ruth, thank you so much again for coming on our show. I'm honored to have, to have been on the show. Thanks, Dan. You bet. We'll talk to you soon.